Hello everyone, praise be to God, and welcome back to Freddy Fish and Luffy's Maze Madness. We are continuing our game today. Last time we got through the first five levels, which was the first world. So now we are on level six. I'm excited. Let's get started. Look at all those kelp feet. Welcome to world two, the kelp forest. I adore the music in this world. And we still have our worm doodle from last time, which is awesome. So the main gimmick that this world introduces, and this level in particular introduces... Look at this giant arrow here, it's pointing here. That is a new room. So levels can have actually up to five rooms, plus a bonus room. But you're only going to see the bonus room on levels that are divisible by five. So if we go through here... We can make our way through here. Now this is also a new gimmick right here. These are whirlpools. Enter a whirlpool and it'll take you to another whirlpool in the same room. And I purposefully left a kelp seed back in the last room so I could pick up the conch shell right here. <laughs> also, you can see one of uh, the bottles from Freddy Fish 1 right there in the wall. They hide lots of cool background stuff in the walls. It's really cool. Like this boot. <laughs> tool ran out. Also, one thing you can do, you can so you can see this balloon is here. That was not here before. The balloon is one of those items that only randomly appears. So on levels that have more than one room, you can just keep entering and exiting rooms until the proper power-ups trigger. So that's pretty nice. On the single level rooms, like in the first world, it, it's like tough luck. If the items didn't spawn, they didn't spawn. But here we can manipulate them to spawn. Alright, I'm gonna assume there's nothing in there, so we can pick up this kelp seed and finish off the level. And go to level 7. Jumpin' jellyfish, let's get all those kelp seeds! So if you couldn't tell, I really like this game. This game is so much fun. And this was also like my childhood here. And I am greedy, I'm gonna try to get as much stuff as I can. Also, you can see the turtle up there on the wall. It's kind of like the fish statue from the last world, where if there's a turtle on the wall, it's either going to be blowing a current, or spitting water at you, or both. Yeah, so that one, you can't, it's hard to tell, but he is pushing me away from him. Likewise, it was easier to swim downwards against him than it was to swim towards him. Music is so good. Oh yeah, and if you're in the one room for a while, then this exit sign appears here. I always like to try to leave one kelp seed in the first room, just in case the next room... Okay. Well, this room has tons of kelp seeds, so that doesn't really matter. But sometimes, there will be special rooms that you can't explore all of if you don't leave a kelp seed behind, because all the kelp seeds in that room are just all on a straight path that you have to go through. Kind of like what we saw in the last level. This part of the music in particular right here, I adore. I also like the background for this level, it's really cool. I'm just gonna be gushing about this game for the entire time I'm playing it, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I can't I can't express to you how much I love this game. It's really, really well done. If it looks if it looks appealing to you even slightly, play it. It, it gets so much better and it gets really fun. Alright, nothing here. Again, just doing this to try to trigger specific spawns. Alright. Oh darn it, there was cotton candy down there. I jumped the gun there. I could go back and get it later, but if you go backwards wow, to old Brad, levels, your score gets locked everywhere. and you can't actually increase your score overall in the game. Thankfully, you can't also you also can't lose lives on earlier levels, you just automatically get unlimited lives. Anglerfish is back. You might remember the anglerfish from Freddy Fish 1, if you, happen to, if you happen to play that game or see my Let's Play of that game. Alright, so we get the birthday cake here. Well, now that we've opened the gate, the anglerfish can also go through the gate, which is not super fun. And down here is the next power-up, kind of like the worm duel. This is Bubble Bath, and one of the junior helpers is Bubbles On. That basically just gives you unlimited Bubble Bath. When you have Bubble Bath on, it might not be obvious what you can do, but if you push the Enter key... You shoot a bubble and you can trap enemies. Now you only have a few a few bubbles at your disposal when you pick up Bubble Bath, but if you have the Junior Helper on, you have an unlimited amount of bubbles. I think that that breaks the game a little too much, so I like playing without it, but I also like a challenge, so I don't like playing with it in the first place anyways. Wow, Grandma Grouper's kelp seeds are everywhere! 
this is another two rumor. I'm going to purposefully leave that kelp seed above me. So that way, if there's no kelp seeds in the next room, I can still get everything. This is also the next enemy of the game. This is the blowfish. Unlike the anglerfish, he can move in any direction. However, he is also very slow. So he is not that big of a threat. He's also not super aggressive. So we want to get the sea urchin, but he's being a kind of annoying. What we can do is we can actually lure him away, or he could just... So what we can do is we can lure him. So he goes there, he's going to go up. See this area that's four squares around? If we get him in there, because he's a blowfish and he's really slow, we can actually manipulate it so we can get past him. Now, as we go later in the game and encounter much faster enemies, that will be much riskier to do. You can also potentially just grab that kelp seed there and you have this circular area to chase, uh, to lose them in. That also works. Let me through, please. Oh yeah, it's a good thing we left that kelp seed in the last room, because otherwise we'd miss out on all of these goodies. And there are a lot of goodies here. Alright, so down there is a bubble that is by far the most powerful power-up in the entire game. If we have the bubble on... First off, enemies run away from us, because now we can literally just splat over them. Not only are we completely invincible with the bubble, we get points when we run into enemies with this on. Also, we have a present up there, a bunch of shells, and this right here, this is a tiny treasure chest, this is a small pearl box. It contains five pearls, unlike the bag only containing three. And again, pearls give you a lot of points, so that's very nice. So if you can grab a bubble and quickly beat bubbles, that that's great. The bubble can really help you out. Ooh, cotton candy. Yes, please. So this is why I very much recommend leaving a kelp seed in the first room, if at all possible. Because we would have missed out on literally every single one of those power-ups in the next room if we had grabbed that. Because the level automatically ends after you get the last kelp seed. Anything else in here? Nope, no new spawns, no new spawns, no new spawns. Alright, I consider that. I, after I do it like three times, I'm gonna assume that the RNG is not super unlucky and that there's just nothing there. Alright, level 10, last level in the kelp forest. We better get swimming and collect all those kelp seeds! This is such a pretty world. So beautiful. And remember, because this is the last level in the world, you know what that means. Bonus room! Bonus rooms are really fun to get in this. <laughs> also, if we leave the room with the birthday cake in it, that that's fine. It can respawn. It's just once we grab it, then we're done. And we already hit the magic scepter switch. Also, I should probably point out that on some levels of a bonus level, there will be specific squares that when you land on them will make the magic scepter despawn. Okay, that's risky. <laughs> Also, it's hard to see, but I believe the crack is in the wall directly, the, the one that I'm facing. So I want to grab this worm doodle before going to the bonus room. The worm doodle will help me get more points in the bonus room. And I don't need the worm doodle to beat other levels. Also, if you have the worm doodle, you're not super affected by currents blowing you away. Alright, grab this. Let's go in! Also, this tile set right here, the pipe tile set, is not used anywhere outside of bonus rooms. Oh, that's nice. I love it when I just run into a guy as he's spawning. Or she. These, these could be girls as well. Probably not the dumb, but... Yes, the worm turtle is giving us so many points. And we have six peanut butter and jellyfish sandwiches. I believe we... I believe the game prevents us from getting more after we have nine. So there's not even a whole lot of point grabbing. Also, when we run out of the worm duo, it plays like that sound effect. If we grab something like this while that sound effect is playing, it'll actually just cut our worm duo out early. Which, while it won't really affect casual play, that'll affect any, I guess, speedruns. So if you do a speedrun, I might speedrun this game. This would be a fun game for me to speedrun. But I want to complete my let's go first, obviously. 
one annoying thing about it is you wouldn't go to any of the bonus rooms because you wouldn't be caring about points. No! That stupid duck. Alright. Well, we had our fun, didn't we? Oh, I forgot. We still have our bubble bath. Artie, don't be afraid to use the bubble bath to your advantage. Like right here, if that guy's gonna be a jerk. Oh, actually, it doesn't have to be the enter key. I think it's pretty much any key on the keyboard. Well, control works as well. Oh, I just realized. I'm not gonna grab that last kelp seed because if memory serves, there's a birthday cake that can spawn in here. Yeah, I'm pushing left control, and that works a lot better, because I'm using my right hand for the keyboard, and I can just simply use my left hand to quickly press that. Ooh, and a firecracker. Score. I'm a sucker for collectibles, what can I say? I guess I might as well do one last check. That bullfish was being annoying and guarding the kelp seed anyways. Nothing in there. Alright, nothing in there. And yeah, that's going to do it for the kelp forest. That was a fun world. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode of Freddy Fish and Movers Maze Madness. I'm going to, again, try to stick to one world per episode. Five levels per episode. So thanks for so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. Hope to see you for the next episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.